in the quiet suburbs of Vienna, Austria. A seemingly routine morning on March 2, 1998, would forever change the lives of a 10-year-old girl and her family. Natasha Kampusch, a bright and ambitious child, was abducted on her way to school by Wolfgang Priklopil, a 35-year-old communications technician. This harrowing ordeal lasted for 3,096 days, a period marked by unimaginable suffering, psychological manipulation, and a remarkable story of survival and resilience. This dramatic narrative delves into the details of Natasha's captivity, her relationship with her captor, and her ultimate escape. The sun had barely risen on that fateful day when Natasha Kampusch left her home, carrying her school bag and dreams of a promising future. Her family, unaware that this would be the last time they would see her for years, waved her goodbye. As Natasha walked along the familiar route to school, a white van approached. Inside was Wolfgang Priklopil, who had meticulously planned the abduction for weeks. In a matter of seconds, he pulled Natasha into the van and drove off, leaving behind a frantic and disbelieving community. The initial search for Natasha was extensive. Police, volunteers, and her distraught family combed the area for any sign of the missing girl. Witnesses reported seeing a white van leading authorities to briefly consider Priklopil as a suspect. However, his calm demeanor and lack of prior criminal record led them to dismiss him quickly. Priklopil resided in a house situated in Strashov, a tranquil village on the outskirts of Vienna, concealed a dark secret beneath its unassuming exterior. Beneath the garage, behind a soundproofed cellar with hidden doors, lay the prison that would hold Natasha for over eight years. The cellar was a cramped windowless room, furnished with a bed, a desk, and a small television. It was here that Natasha spent her days in isolation, her only human contact being her captor. Initially, Psyclopil attempted to create a semblance of normality. He would read her bedtime stories, bring her gifts, and even tuck her into bed at night. This facade of kindness, however, quickly gave way to the true nature of his intentions. He demanded that Natasha address him as maestro or my lord, asserting his dominance and control over her. The psychological abuse was relentless. Priklopil claimed to be an Egyptian god and subjected Natasha to intense physical labor. She was forced to clean the house half-naked and was often starved, beaten, and deprived of basic human rights. Despite this, Natasha found ways to survive. She would imagine herself in more pleasant circumstances, such as being at a spa when Priklopil bathed her. This mental escapism became a crucial coping mechanism for her. As the years passed, a complicated dynamic developed between captor and captive. While Priklopil's violent and controlling behavior intensified, there were rare moments of what could be misconstrued as compassion. These moments, however, were deeply rooted in manipulation. Priklopil allowed Natasha to watch television, listen to the radio, and read books though he carefully controlled the content to keep her unaware of the outside world's search for her. Natasha's resilience shone through despite the abuse. She educated herself with the books provided, maintaining a sense of purpose and hope. Her dreams of freedom never faded, and she even envisioned her future self coming to rescue her. This vision of her 18-year-old self promising liberation became a beacon of hope during the darkest times. As Natasha grew older and more defiant, Priklopil's treatment of her worsened. He began to beat her more frequently, 
up to 200 times a week and deprived her of food to weaken her physically. Natasha repeatedly tried to flee from Preclopil, but his intimidation and the terror of his potential retaliation always stopped her. He warned her that the house was booby-trapped with explosives and that he would kill her and the neighbors if she tried to flee. The isolation took a toll on Natasha's mental health. She fantasized about killing Priclopil, but these thoughts were fleeting and quickly dismissed. Despite the overwhelming despair, Natasha's will to survive remained unbroken. She continued to look for opportunities to escape, knowing that her only chance of survival was to outsmart her captor. The breakthrough came on August 23, 2006. By then, Priclopil had grown more confident and complacent, often leaving Natasha alone while he attended to various tasks. On this particular day, while she was cleaning his car in the garden, Priclopil received a phone call. The noise from the vacuum cleaner forced him to step away to hear the conversation. This brief moment of distraction was the opportunity Natasha had been waiting for. Leaving the vacuum running, she bolted towards the gate, which, to her relief, was unlocked. Overcoming her paralyzing fear, she ran through neighboring gardens and streets, jumping fences and pleading for help from passers-by. Her frantic escape was finally acknowledged by a 71-year-old neighbor who called the police. At 1.04 p.m., Natasha was finally free, her ordeal coming to an end after 3,096 days. Wolfgang Priklopil, realizing that his captive had escaped, chose to end his life rather than face justice. He confessed his crimes to a friend before laying down in front of a train and committing suicide. His death marked the end of a horrific chapter, but for Natasha, the journey to recovery was just beginning. The world watched in awe and horror as the details of Natasha's captivity emerged. Despite the trauma, she displayed remarkable strength and resilience. She published a memoir, 3,096 Days, detailing her experience and became an advocate for victims of abduction and abuse. Her decision to purchase Preclopil's house and fill in the cellar was a powerful statement of reclaiming her past and preventing it from becoming a public spectacle. Natasha Kampusch's story is a testament to the human spirit's capacity to endure and overcome even the most harrowing circumstances. Her survival is not just a tale of resilience, but also a stark reminder of the evil that can lurk behind ordinary facades. As we reflect on her experience, we are reminded of the importance of vigilance, empathy, and the relentless pursuit of justice for those who suffer in silence. In a world where abductions and captivity still occur, Natasha's story serves as both a warning and an inspiration. It underscores the need for continued efforts to protect the vulnerable and to support survivors as they rebuild their lives. The strength and courage she displayed during her 3,096 days in captivity will forever remain a powerful symbol of hope and survival. Thank you for watching Noctuary's deep dive into the story of Natasha Kampusch. If you found this story as compelling as we did, please give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel for more true crime tales. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue to share these important stories.